Storer Backup and Recovery supports wide selection of hypervisors. One of them is OpenStack. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of its key capabilities in data protection area. Storer Backup and Recovery consists of two main components. One is the server, that's actually what you are seeing here in this view, and the nodes that are actually data movers. So let me log in to the administrative portal. The first screen obviously is the dashboard. So I, in my environment, I have only one node that is um, protecting um, multiple hypervisors. And the very first step you usually would like to, to do is co configure the um, environment itself. So in the dashboard, so you see that there is a configuration wizard. Store backup and recovery, as I already mentioned, supports wide range of sources. So in the sources tab, you see that we support not only OpenStack, which is the key of our today's presentation, but also the containers, the cloud, like Office 365, storage providers, applications with generic mechanism, and so on. So using this initial configuration wizard, you're able to quickly uh, connect to your OpenStack environment. So here you need to just provide the URL to the Keystone APIs. You can have obviously multiple Keystones defined in here. We also support the authentication domains. So if the basic um, setup is not enough for you, in the virtual environment section, in the infrastructure, whenever you define hypervisor manager, like the Keystone in our case, you're able to define also multiple authentication domains. So not only the uh, basic setups are supported, but also quite complex ones without the need to add multiple hypervisor managers. For the OpenStack environment, we support two main strategies. One is the disk attachment. So you deploy a virtual machine in your OpenStack environment and it attaches, drives and backups data directly using SUN in this case, so using Cinder API. So full backups are supported for all uh, common backends. But if you would like to use incremental backups, you need to have Ceph monitor, access to the Ceph monitors from the node. Uh, the SSH transfer one has additional advantage. It actually can be installed outside of the um, OpenStack environment and connect directly to your hypervisors. So if you have a qcow 2 base slash raw files environment, one of them is actually it's, it's Virtuoso as well, uh, then you could use SSH transfer. Optionally, it also supports Ceph. It means that you are able to transfer data directly from Ceph monitors, not over SSH in this case, and it supports both full and incremental backups in, uh, regardless if you are using Ceph or not. Now, in my instances view, Notice that I have already a uh, wide uh, selection of the virtual machines in here. And inside the backup policy, so if a virtual machine has a policy assigned, let's go into the details, this OpenStack SLA. In the rule, I'm able to, sp uh, to specify one of my backup destinations that, that I have uh, configured in this environment. So I can have multiple rules and according to different schedules, I have option to um, run backups at different times. It means that whenever I invoke manually the backup, I need to specify if I have multiple rules, according to which rule I'm going to have this backup done. Backup destinations can be different for the rules and uh, we support them a lot. If you see the backup destination section, notice that this freedom of choice actually gives you quite significant flexibility. So you have not only file system, which is not only a regular plain file system, but also we support synthetic backups with the ISO layer capabilities and the, um, especially for the air gap data protection, but also the object storage. Quite commonly, you can see the S3, not only the Amazon S3, but also the S3 compatible storage in your on-prem uh, installations. Uh, OpenStack users may like the OpenStack Swift uh, connector as well. If you would like to use the enterprise legacy um, backup systems, 
We also are support the Dells, IBMs, Veritas, or MicroFocus's um, solutions. So this can easily be integrated with your um, backup solution in this case. Now, in the virtual environments, if I have this policy already assigned, and I have on one of my VMs, I'm able to invoke this backup manually on demand. So here I can run, let's assume even a full backup, it's a small VM. Notice that the console at the bottom actually shows everything what is happening. So the, by default, we have the workflow execution view style. So this is the new, what has came with version 5.1. And if you just expand this view, you see that we have currently an export task already running. So the export task is being invoked on the specific node. So we can have multiple nodes with different configurations assigned. And notice that this has been assigned to this node. And now it's exporting data from my OpenStack environment. Once the export completes, the store task is being invoked and it does what is necessary to store the data in the backup provider. There are some specific circumstances like the shared staging space with the backup destination approach where you don't need actually to wait for the store task to complete because it's going to be instant in this case. It's just moving around the same file system, the data. Now, obviously, the, the cleanup process happens. And here is my OpenStack environment. I, I see, as you can see, I have multiple instances. At least I have limited the view to the specific availability zone in the admin project. The cool thing about Store Backup and Recovery is that it supports projects. So in the infrastructure, notice that we gather information about the projects as well. So here you can see that I have some projects already defined and we can actually create quotas for each of these projects. So if you would like to leave Backup and Recovery to your users and use our plugin, uh, you actually are able to assign quotas from this view and this allows you to um, limit the number of backups per project, per instance, and, and so on. Once you uh, applied such quota, this quota is being evaluated with every uh, on-demand or scheduled job that is being um, invoked. Notice that my backup has just been, uh, has just completed. For the OpenStack environment, we support also the um, restore. Well, obviously, the restore is the plain restore is the obvious capability, but the um, option to mount so um, file level recovery for the uh, backups itself. So in the mount view here, you have several options. Actually, you can either um, mount file systems automatically, specify file systems to be mounted. So if the VM has like this one. Mm, several file systems you can just mount uh, the one that you that you like and optional you can share drives over iSCSI so this allows you to mount such shared drive later to your target virtual machine let's just invoke the plain restore and in the restore window, notice that I have several options. So I can specify the cluster, I can customize the disk layout. So it gives me option to specify which drives I would like to restore and which volume type I should use. I can um, customize the networking. So maybe I would like to attach instance to the different network, restore with a different flavor, select optionally the access key. Here is the limitation, only administrative access keys are supported and optionally change the name of the, um, of the VM if I restore it, for instance. So now I would like to restore it to back to the, let's say, admin projects. Let's say invoke the restore process. In the meantime, let's just uh, have a short overview of the details in here. In the virtual machine details, notice that I have the complete history of the both backup statistics and the restore stats. Well, I haven't invoked restores for this VM previously. So now let's just check here, backup time. This is especially useful for to track which phase it takes most of your time um, during the backup or restore uh, process. In the events calendar, you can uh, also see the 
uh, and filter out the backups history of this particular virtual machine. In my case, notice that I don't have any backups previously uh, here marked up yet. And now you notice that I have also option to um, exclude specific drives from backup and specify additional settings related to the pre-post remote command execution. So if you would like to have a consistent backup, that's the place where you could uh, specify that my database needs to be quiet earlier before the snapshot takes place and after the sn uh, snapshot is complete, it should be resumed. Uh, for the SSH transfer, we also support the uh, Nova volumes. And optionally, you can specify that the um, image needs to be downloaded from the glance instead of the one that is used on the, on the instance. That actually helps to solve uh, many situations where you later would like to restore VM um, we're using the original image instead of the one that was already deployed with the instance. My restore process has completed. Here it's the import phase, so restore plus import. And um, in my instances view, notice that I have a new VM3 running. For the OpenStack and along for the other uh, for the other platforms as well, we also support the recovery plans and uh, other uh, features that may automate the restore process as well. Thank you for watching for this video. That summarizes the key elements of the OpenStack data protection that I have prepared for you today. Stay tuned for the other videos.